Shangri ya Bwana. Amen. Kama bado tumesimama hivyo, nataka tu tusimame namna hivyo. Tunapo mkaribisha Pastor Mchungi akaweze kuchukulia pale. Na kuna kitu tu kimoja ambacho nataka munisaidie Anapoanza kuingia katika stage Nataka tuendelea kupika shangwe na nderemo mbaka Ataka mwambia ngoja Bwana Yesu asifiwe Amen. Kwa hivyo tuanza kushangilia Bwana kwa achiri ya mtumishu wa Bwana Shangilia Bwana Shangilia Bwana Shangilia Bwana Shangilia Bwana Aleluya Hallelujah. Amen. Bwana asifiwe. Amen. Bwana asifiwe. Amen. Are you happy? Yes. Amen. To fadhali be seated. I'm, thank you so much. I'm honored. Uh Begini hao wana sifa makofi. Maana wamefanya kazi nzuri. Amen. Uh, nimeona kuna wageni ambao hawakuwa jana so ninataka tu nikaweze kujiintroduce tena na baadaye najua Mungu atatupatia neema ya Kiswahili kwa wingi Bwana asifiwe sana Mimi kama ni kama daktari hapa tuko na shida na Kiswahili lakini Mungu anazidi kutupa neema Amen Kwa majina naitwa Isaac Mchungi. Nimeokoka Yesu ni Bwana. Jana nilisema kwamba kwa neema ya Mungu this is my 30th year in salvation. Na nashukuru Mungu kwa sababu ya amenilinda, ameniweka, amenibariki and I'm so blessed in the name of the Lord. Amen. Uh na ningependa kusema kwamba Na chunga kanisa linaito Living Hope Yuko pale mali Kule Nairobi mali nito Mudhama Na Kwa wote ambao mutatembe Nairobi Ningesema kwa mba Unakaribisho pale Because I believe you are not Wana sifio sana You are not local, you are mobile Na siku moja mutatembe pale Na nitashukuru mungu sana Na kiona nyuso zenu kule uh, kitu kingine nilisema kwamba ni I pastor one of the most healthy churches in the world I believe Because there are no sick people in my church Na nikisema I'm not boasting, it is true Wana sifiwe Yanu kingia kanisa kwetu It is impossible to stay sick I said it is what? Impossible to stay sick So it is impossible for you this week To go home sick Amen Kitu tunambacho ni natamani tu kutoka kwenu ni kitu kimoja ni ito concentration Yani usikize neno Bibina sama kwamba wakati ambapo mtesi alikuwa na tesa wana wa Israeli Mungu alituma neno lake Wakati waligonjeka Sio kitu kingine kilitumwa Ni neno la mungu lilitumwa Na hilo neno litikaweza kwa weka huru Hilo neno lilileta uponyaji It is not easy Kupata na fasi kama hii ambayo tunapata sisi hapa Maufunzo kama yale ambayo bishop mayaubiri Oh nafikiru na yapata wapi kenye hii Bwana asifiwa sana We don't find those teachings are very rare And in si mafunzo ambayo napata every now and then Lakini mafunzo kama hayo ya naleta utofauti katika maishi yetu Ili mungu akaweza kutujenga anatuma neno Wakati ambapo Paulo alikuwa anaaga wana wa Efeso, alikuwa najua anaenda Yerusalemi, amina anaenda Roma na kifika Roma hata rudi, hapo ndiyo takuwa tamati ya maisha yake. Akaambia wa Efeso na leaders wa Efesians, akawambia, I commend you to God. Wana sifiwe. Ninaopena kwa mungu na kwa neno la neema yake. Na kwa hilo neno, dilo litaweza kuwa jenga na kuwapatia urithi. Kati ya wale ambao, wanasipo sana, kati ya wale ambao na kuwa wanatakaso. 
He says, I commend you to God. That is in the book of Acts chapter 20, verse 32. And I say, I commend you to God and to the word of his grace, which is able to build you up and to give you an inheritance among them which are being sanctified. So, neno ambayo nenda kulubiri wiki hii. Sio tu kwa ajili ya wale watu ambao wanaenda kupona. Lakini pia ni kwa ajili yako na mimi ambao tunahitaji hili neno. Because kuna mtu ambaye ukitoka hapa utalibeba hili neno ukaweza kulipeleka mahali. Na hai na hii neno utaleta utaweza kuleta uponyaji kwa sababu umelibeba kutoka mahali ambapo upako Mungu upo. Praise the name of the Lord. So nataka tukaweza kusoma some few verses in the Bible. Uh, in the next uh, around 50 minutes tutakuwa tumemaliza ili tukaweza kukula lunch yetu and I know we shall be back for another powerful session ambayo Mungu anatenda mambo makuu. Amen. Wa Efeso mlango wa kwanza Ephesians I want us to there's some powerful version powerful verses in this book so zingine ukiingia tu pale unaanza kusikia uendelee tu because this is one of my favorite books amen Ephesians chapter 1 verse 3 it says blessed be the god and father of our lord jesus christ who has blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. And I say, Ma abarikiwe mungu na baba wa bwana wetu Yesu Christo. Ambaye ametubariki na baraka zote za kiroho dani ya Christo Yesu. Wana sifiwe. Abarikiwe nani? Mungu. Baba wa Bwana wetu Yesu Kristo. Ambaye ametubariki na baraka ngapi? Ametubariki na baraka zote in spiritual places in Christ Jesus. So yesterday tumeguzia mambo fulani ambayo nilisema kama Mungu ametupatia all things. That was in first Peter I mean second Peter chapter 1 and verse 3. Where the Bible says God has given us all things that pertain to life and godliness. Yani Mungu ametupatia kila kitu ambacho kinaambatana na maisha na maisha ya uungu. So kumaanisha kwamba wewe kama mwana wa Mungu ambaye umeingia katika ufalme wa Mungu, Mungu amekupa vyote ambavyo unavihitaji kuishi maisha haya ya kawaida na maisha ya uungu. Yani hauhitaji chochote kutoka nje. In, everything is inside. Yani you are self-contained. Everything you need is inside you. Bwana asifiwe. Kila kitu nacho kuhitaji, mungu amesha kupa. That is what the Bible says. So kitu ambacho nafaa kufanya kama wana mungu, ni kuaccept ama kuagree na neno la mungu. Unakubaliana na neno laki. Muimbaja alimbo wimba akisema kwamba nakubaliana na neno lako. Wakati ambapo nakubaliana na neno la mungu, unaanza kuapply faith ama imani and whatever you have believed will come to pass kwa sababu gani umekubaliana na neno la Mungu kama Mungu ametubariki na baraka zote za kiungu ndani ya Kristo and the bible says these spiritual blessings are in heavenly places in Christ so is the baraka ziko mali pazuri bali pa mbingu so when we access the heavens we access the blessings of God Bwana asifiwe. Galatians chapter 3. Wa Galatia mlango wa 3. Mi start from verse 13. The Bible says, for as many are of the works of the law, are under the curse. For it is written, cursed is everyone that continues not 
in all the things written in the book of the law to do them. But that no man is justified by the law in the sight of God. It is evident for the just shall live by faith. And the law is not of faith, but the man that does them shall live in them. Then verse 13 says, Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law. Being made a curse for us, for it is written, Cursed is everyone that hangeth on a tree. That the blessing of Abraham might come on the Gentiles through Christ Jesus. That we might receive the promise of the Spirit through faith. Now verse 10 in Asema, Kwamba, Wale wote ambao, Wanafanya matendo ya sharia, Wako chini alana. Maane maandikwa, Amelaniwa hile mutu ambaye hatimizi mamba yote ambaye maandikwa katika sharia, Kuyatenda. And verse 11 says, But no man is justified by the law in the sight of God. Hakuna mutu hata moja, Anaweza kuwesabiwa haki mbele za mungu kwa kutii sharia. And we are going to hit this point home because it's the main reason why many re remain where they are. Bwana sifiwe. Hii ndiyo sababu ambayo watu wanabaki mahali wako wameokoka bado ni wagonjwa. Wameokoka bado umasikini meotawala. Wameokoka bado shida zimeambatana nao. Yet ni wana wa mungu. Yani you have God. God has blessed you with everything. But I can't kama mutu ambaye hana tumaini. Yet you may okok. Na tulisema jana kwamba kitu ambacho kinafanya mkristo akose kuishi ambaye maisha ambaye mungu anatamani aishi. Kina ito anga ignorance. My, my people the Bible says are destroyed for the lack of knowledge. Watu wangu wanaangamia kwa kukosa maarifa. Na hii ndio mambo ambayo tunausungumzia leo hakuna mtu hata moja ambaye atapendeza Mungu kwa kutii sheria. Sio kama kuna watu hapa ambao walikuwa kama mimi. The more you try to obey God, the more you fail. Yaani vile ulikuwa na jitahidi sana ukisema leo sitadanganya ndio nadanganya. Leo sitafanya hivi ndio ukafanya. Kwa sababu gani? It is impossible for you to please God by trying your best to obey the law. It is impossible. Bwana asifiwe. Then the Bible says this. In verse 11, he says, and, and the law is not of faith, but the man that doeth them shall live by them. Then verse 13 says, Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law. For it is written, Cursed is everyone that hangs on the tree, that the blessing of Abraham might come on the Gentiles through faith. Hallelujah. That we might receive the promise of the Spirit through faith. Now, it says, Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law. So, Nataka could define what is the curse of the law. Kama vibina sama kama mungu amekututu onkombo kutuwa kwa laane ya sharia. Laane ya sharia ni kitu gani? Bibina sema kwamba amelaniwa mtu ambaye anahang kwa muti. Na Kristo Yesu, he hanged on that tree of Calvary. And the Bible says he became a curse for us. So that the blessing of Abraham can come upon our lives. What is the curse of the law? Katika Deuteronomy 28, nataka tuwandike chini and you go and read it. From the first, maybe we can just touch it a bit before... I think we have some little time. Amen. Deuteronomy 28. From verse 1. The Bible says, It shall come to pass that if you hearken diligently to the voice of the Lord your God to observe all that is written to do all that is in his commandments which I command thee this day that the Lord thy God will set thee above the nations of the earth he says if you shall come to pass if you hearken diligently to the voice of the Lord your God to observe and to do all that is written in his commandments which I command thee 
this day that the Lord thy God will set thee high above the nations of the earth. So this is the blessing. Mungu amesema kwamba wakati ambapo mtatii sheria, mtaangalia na kutenda kanuni zake. Anasema kwamba nitaoweka juu, kumaanisha kwamba nitaobariki. Nita nitabobariki, then you'll be blessed when you go in, you'll be blessed when you go out. Bonus if you will. He says, and this blessing shall come upon thee and overtake you if thou shalt hearken to the voice of the Lord thy God. Blessed shall you be in the city, shall you blessed shall you be in the field. Blessed shall be the fruit of thy body, the fruit of thy ground, the fruit of thy cattle, the increase of your kind, which is your cattle, and the flocks of thy sheep. Blessed be shall, shall be thy basket and thy store. Blessed shall thou be when you come in, blessed shall you be when you go out. The Lord shall command blessings upon you and in thy storehouses and in all that thou set of thy hand to do and he shall bless thee in the, in the land which the Lord shall give unto thee. The Lord shall establish you. Yani baraka za ajabu. Wakati mbapo mefanya nini? Unati sheria za mungu. That was a blessing of God. It's a powerful blessing. But the conditions one last issue. Yani unaposoma hizo baraka ambazo Mungu ameziandika pale Deuteronomy 28. Yani umebarikiwa ukiingia, unabarikiwa ukitoka. Watoto wako wamebarikiwa, shamba lako limebarikiwa, maadui wako wamemalizwa, wamefinywa, hakuna kitu ambacho wanaweza kukufanya. Wanakuja kwako kwa njia moja wanatawanyika katika njia saba. Hiyo baraka ni ajabu. Unapoitazama, he says, utakuwa tu juu, hautakuwa chini. You'll be above only and not beneath. Unapo angale baraka hizo ni za wonderful things. Yani promises za ajabu. Tamu sana. But what is the condition? He says, if you shall do what? Obey. You shall observe to do all that is written therein. And then he says, this is the condition. Swali ni moja. Among us, Nani anaweza kusema kwamba sasa mimi mbele za Mungu hakuna ikosa ambalo nimelifanya? Bwana asifiwe. It is impossible for you to please God by obeying the law. Now the curse comes later. Verse 15. Yaani kutoka verse 1 mpaka verse 14 ni baraka. Lakini kutoka verse 15 mpaka verse 68. Yaani laana za ajabu. Laana za za ajabu. Kuna kuchanganyikiwa. Kuna kupata kansa. Kuna kugonjeka. Kuna mazao ya shamba yenu kuwa mabaya. Everything bad starts from verse 15. Na anasema kwamba if thou shall it shall come to pass if you will not hearken to the voice of the Lord thy God. And observe to do all. The word is all again. He says that to observe to do all his commandments and his statutes, which I command thee this day, that all these curses shall come upon thee and overtake you. Yani blessings can follow you and overtake you. But when you don't obey, what happens? Curses follow you and overtake you. Yani curses inapo overtake na manisha. Yaani hata ukimbia style gani mahali utaenda utaikuta imefika Hiyo maisha ni mbaya ama si mbaya Bwana asiwe sana Yaani kuka kuna kitu ambacho you see a blessing is an empowerment to prosper Baraka ni uwezo Mungu ambao utakuwezesha kufanikiwa Lakini laana ni uwezo wa kipepo ambao ukiwa juu yako haijalishi unafanya juhudi gani you will end up a failure it is terrible to be cast. That's why we call the gospel the gospel. Because in Jili ni habari in Jema. Habari so good, almost too good to be believed. Bibili ya sema kwamba Yesu Christo alifanyika laana kwa ajili yetu. Tell your neighbor all the blessings in Deuteronomy 28 are yours. 
But all the curses were taken away by the cross. Hello. Yani hizo lana zimeandiko pale si zako tena. Kwa maana kuna jamaa mmoja ambaye alikuja uh, kuna Yesu mwana wa Mungu alikuja akajivika uh, mwili wa kibinadamu akaishi kama binadamu na akachukua dhambi zetu laana zote akazitundika pale msalabani so that all the curses that you could have received they were nailed to the cross. Bwana asifiwe. Yaani hakuna jambo ambalo liko hapa ambalo umelitenda ambalo halikutandikwa pale kwa msalaba. Bwana asifiwe. So every curse was taken away. Now we shall summarize what curses are. The curse of the law, number one is sickness. Is a curse of the law. Part of the curse of the law ni magonjwa. Wakati ambapo unatazama na unaposoma kutoka verse 15 all the way to verse 68 unakuta kuna magonjwa kama magonjwa ya sukari ulcers hizo vitu zote mbovu mbovu unakuta kwamba zote zimeandikwa katika biblia bwana asifiwe all those sicknesses arthritis sijui magonjwa gani yote yako pale katika the curse of the law the next part of the curse of the law a spiritual death yani your relationship na Mungu haipo Bwana asifiwe So we say the first curse of the law is what sickness The next thing is your relationship with God yani you don't have you are cut off from God Kwa sababu ya msalaba I am now united with God mimi ni kitu kimoja na Mungu nimepatanishwa na Mungu dhambi ndiyo ilikuwa kitu ambacho kilikuwa kimezuia mimi nisikaweze kukaribia Mungu kimeondolewa Bwana asifiwe Biblia inasema kwamba macho ya Mungu ni matakatifu hayawezi kutazama dhambi lakini kuna mmoja ambaye anaitwa Yesu Kristo. Katika Wakorinthi wa pili mlango wa 5 mstari wa 21, Biblia inasema kwamba alimfanya yule asiyejua dhambi awe dhambi kwa ajili yetu ili sisi tuwe wenye haki wa Mungu. So mimi na Mungu tumepatanishwa sio kwa sababu nimekuwa mzuri, lakini kwa sababu nimemwamini Kristo ambaye alifanyika dhambi kwa ajili yangu. Na kwa sababu nimemwamini yeye amefanyika ame, ame dhambi akanifanya mimi nikakuwa mwenye haki. So that curse of being away from God is no longer there. I am a child of God na nimezaliwa katika ufalme wa nuru. Mungu anaponitazama haoni dhambi tena kwa sababu gani? Nimemwamini Kristo, nimefanyika, nimeoshwa na dhambi na kutokana na dhambi zote niko safi kama theluji. I am as righteous as Jesus before the throne of God. Why? Because Christ died for me. He died in my place. Yaani katika akili ya Mungu wakati Kristo alikufa we were we died with him we were buried with him and then we rose again with him Biblia inasema kwamba tumeketishwa mbinguni na yeye in spiritual realms the bible says he has made us sit together with him in heavenly places in Christ Jesus This church people don't get excited easy do they Bwana asifiwe sana hii kanisa watu wa furai rahisi. Ni mmoja tu umeona kuna msichana mmoja na smile sana. Yaani hii kitu inamuingia. Yaani unasikiaje ujumbe mzuri kama walafu na nyamasa tu na nipatia face unashindwa kuinterpret kama umekasirika, umefurai. Yaani uko tu pale. Bwana asifiwe sana. <laughs> the next curse of the law is called poverty. Those are the three things. Say poverty. Poverty ni kitu kibaya ni tonga baya. Bwana asifiwe. When you are poor everything becomes an emergency. Yaani unahitaji shilingi hamsini kupeleka mamako hospitali na una. Inakuwa nini? Emergency. Poverty is bad. Poverty is wicked. It is not from God. Hello. Katika umaskini unajua kuna life expectancy in the US katika science wanasema kwamba 
kwa wanaume ni 78 years kwa wanawake ni 82 years yani can you imagine mzungu yani anajua mzungu compared na sisi ni kama kuku ya kinyeji na kuku ya broila nani anajua hivyo hamjui hivyo lakini mbona anaishi zaidi kuku kuliko na wewe ni kinyeji Halo. <laughs> Nani anafaa kuishi zaidi? Si ni wewe. Lakini kwa nini mzungu anaishi zaidi kuliko wa Afrika? They have got more money than you. That's the only reason. Healthcare system yao iko serious. They have money. Kuna watu ambao hawa... Nani anajua mtu ambaye angekufa kama angekufa? I mean, kama angekuwa na pesa angekufa. Mimi najua wengi sana. Bwana asifiwe sana. Daktari ndiye anajua tu. Bwana asifiwe. Nani anajua mtu anaweza kuwa madhara maximum security prison kwa sababu hange afford lawyer. How many know that? Yaani you cannot afford, yaani wewe unaoza jela kwa sababu you could not afford a lawyer. Umepata umepatikana, yaani umeshitakiwa ume na hauko na makosa na kwa sababu uko na mtetezi, not because When the Bible says money is a defense as wisdom is a defense. Hata mtu ambaye ni tajiri akifanya makosa ni vigumu sana kumweka jela. Lakini maskini ambaye amepatikana kwa yani hata hujafanya makosa umeshukiwa tu they have just suspected you. Unazozea jela. Kwa sababu you lost you didn't have what money. Ni wamama wangapi wajawazito yani time tu kumtoa tu mahali kwa hospitali ambayo inafaa aende tu maybe alikuwa anaitaka CS a C section akaweze kuoperate ni wangapi wamekufa wengi sana not because god wanted them to die unajua saa zingine wa afrika wanaanza kusema hakuna mtu anakufa bure there must be a reason huyu lazima alirogwa huyu lazima alifanywa hivi ndio akakufa Now poverty is one of the greatest reason why people die early. Mm. Yes. Imagine. Bwana asifiwe sana. Huyo mzee angekuwa baby ako na pesa, ako na medical system scheme insurance hiyo kitu ingekuwa imekuwa taken care of bwana asifiwe sana but because of poverty nje sasa uko na wewe ni mgonjwa alafu tena unabaki hakuna kitu mbaya kama hospitali unakaanga pale hospitali tu ashie tu hospitali tu waache madaktari unaangalia tu ceiling at least yeye anatembea anatembea huko anatembea huko anazunguka huko wewe unakaa pale kwa kitanda kuangalia ceiling ukitoka ceiling ni kuchoo kwa choo kwa bafu narudi pale kwa kitanda hiyo maisha ni ngumu wanakupimia masaa ambayo unafaa kuona wageni wageni wanafaa kukuona masaa fulani na masaa fulani yani wewe ni prisoner bwana asifiwe tell your neighbor i refuse to be poor in jesus name so katika neno la Mungu god has called you out of poverty akakwambia kwamba nime Mungu Yesu Kristo amefanyika laana Bibi nasema kwamba amefanyika kuwa maskini ili sisi kupitia kwake tuwe matajiri. Amen. Refuse to be poor. Poverty is not from God. Bwana asifiwe. So Bibi anatuambia hivi kwamba Jesus Christ this Bible in verse 13 says Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law being made a curse for us for it is written cursed is everyone that hangs on the tree so that the blessing of abraham might come upon the gentiles by faith now what is the blessing of abraham leo nataka tuende pole pole kidogo ili wakati ambapo tutaanza ku make altar calls unakuja hapo ukijua kumbe hii kitu nimeahidiwa kumbe hii kitu ni yangu na inafaa ni grab by force by fire in Jesus name this is my blessing amen the book of genesis the book of genesis chapter 
in the word of God, the more you know, the more free you become. Amen. Knowledge. The Bible says, by knowledge shall the just be delivered. By knowledge shall the just be delivered. Which means a just man can be living in a, a just man can be living in a life and by a by knowledge shall the just be delivered 24 verse 1 the bible says and abraham was old and well stricken in age and the Lord had blessed Abraham in how many things? At Abraham alikuwa mzee. Miaka yake ilikuwa imeenda. Mswahili angesema alikuwa amekula chumvi nyingi. Na Biblia inasema kwamba Abraham Mungu alikuwa amembariki na kila kitu. God had blessed Abraham not in some things, in all things. Kumbuka pale katika wagalatia mlangu wa tatu msara wa kumina ine Bibina nasema kwamba ili baraka ya Abrahamu ifanya nini? Ikuja kwetu sisi wa mataifa so The blessing of Abraham is when God blesses you in how many things? In all things Now katika kusoma koko biblia Uliwai ona Abrahamu alikuwa mkonjo? Never Bona sifiwe. Relationship ya Mungu na Abraham ilikuwa namna gani? Bona sifiwe sana. Biblia inasema kwamba how can I hide anything from my friend Abraham? Yaani Mungu anasema nitawaiza kuficha aje anything kutoka kwa rafiki yangu Abraham. Yaani Abraham was a friend of God. This man was blessed. I love the other thing you see about Abraham. Abraham alikuwa amebarikiwa na mali. Kuna watu ambao unafikiri ukiwa na mali sijui unakuwa na maringo, sijui uko na mali unakuwa na madharau, sio lazima ukuwa na madharau ukiwa na mali. Bwana asifiwe. Kuna watu katika Biblia ambao Mungu alikuwa amewabariki katika staili kubwa. Na wakati Mungu anaita Abraham anamwambia nini? Katika Genesis chapter 12 from verse 1, anaambia Abraham come out of Ur of the Chaldeans. Alafu anamwambia and I will bless you. Bwana asifiwe. He says I will make your name great. Sio kama mai wana mtu dunia hii ambaye jina yake ni kubwa na yeye ni maskini. Have you ever seen such fellows? Never. You can never have a great name when you are poor. It is impossible. So Genesis chapter 12, maybe you see what God is saying about Abraham. Genesis 12 from verse 1. The Bible says, Now the Lord had said unto Abram, Get out of thy country, out of thy kindred from your father's house into the land that I will show you. And he says, And I will make thee a great nation. I will bless thee and make thy name great. And thou shalt be a blessing. Bona do you know kuna tofauti kati ya kuwa baraka kubarikiwa na kuwa baraka? Hello. Yaani unabarikiwa mpaka unakuwa baraka. Kubarikiwa kwa mfano wewe unaweza kuwa umebarikiwa kwa mfano and and your children don't lack school fees. They don't lack food. They don't lack shoes. Bwana asifiwe. Ulikuwa na mzee nyumbani. Sababu na kwetu sisi ni nyumbani we were in a family that we were according to other people were a bit blessed so watoto shule wangu na kuenjoy mpaka unatoa viatu saa zingine wanatembea bila viatu na shuleni alafu na mzee alikuwa jirani yetu pala anatuuliza kwa nini leo unatembea chini kama kuku bwana asifiwe sasa unatembea mguu chini tupu yani sema kuku ndio nafai tembee kama bila unatembea hivi na labda wewe kwenu nyumbani mnatembea hivyo May God help us in the name of Jesus that we may not lack anything in Jesus name. Kubarikiwa na maanisha yuwa yaani kuna watu ambao 
katika maisha yao they make ends meet yani kumaanisha kama ni school fees itapatikana bwana asifiwe kama ni chakula iko labda sio standard ambayo unaitaka lakini hauwezi lala njaa yani wewe umebarikiwa ukitaka kwenda mahali kusafiri unaweza enda uko tu sawa lakini hauwezi ukasaidia mtoto jirani wewe umebarikiwa lakini haujafanyika baraka Yaani baraka ya Abrahamu anakuambia kwamba nitakubariki, nitakufanya taifa kubwa na nitakufanya baraka. When you are a blessing it means the blessing is now overflowing. Inamaanisha kuna mtoto wa jirani unaweza tafuta useme kwamba nitamfunza. I thank God nimefunza watoto ambao si wangu. Amen. Bishop amefunza watoto ambao si wake and that's a, you have become a blessing. Amen. Yaani ukitembea you are influencing others and affecting others in a positive way. Umefanyika baraka. Amen. Wakati nimejua neno la Mungu, mimi mwenyewe nimepona, nimewekwa huru, niko sawa ndani ya Kristo, lakini popote ninaenda, lazima watu wapone. Amen. Lazima maisha ya watu yabadilike. Kanisa mbalo ninachunga na shukuru Mungu I was telling somebody 90% of the people in my church either they work or are employed Katika enzi hii ambao watu wanasema kwamba hakuna kazi mpaka vice president mwenyewe anawaambia wakati wana graduate <laughs> anasema tuambiane ukwe hakuna ka <laughs> Nani vice president anaambia graduates watu mtu amekaa miaka nne college kama ulikuwa unafanya four year course kama ulikuwa unafanya engineering unachapa five years kama ulikuwa unafanya medicine miaka ngapi Sita alafu naambiwa tuambiane ukweli hakuna kazi unasikiaje kama wewe ni graduate i will not believe what the people say the bible says whose report shall you believe i will believe the report of the lord kama mimi sitakaa bila kazi hata mambo ya uchumi kuwe na mna gani mimi ni tofauti mimi ni mbegu ambayo ni tofauti mimi nitakaa katika wakati ambapo ni mgumu i will always be a blessed man bwana asifiwe baraka ya abraham inakufanya ufanikiwe wakati mambo yengine yote yanakuwa mabaya wacha nikuulize swali bwana asifiwe sana wewe unajua nje inaitwa israel bwana asifiwe labda umeona katika tv israel ni nje inakaaje wewe niwaulize tu swali inakaaje wewe unajua israel ni, ni desert sasa zingine unakaa mwaka mzima bila kupata toni ya maji hiyo ndio nje ambayo mungu anaambia mtu anaambia abraham nilikuwa nauliza mungu badala ya kuambia jamaa watoke kule egypt washuke tu chini wakuja hapa kongo hapa hapa chini kongo mahali kuna nine in nine months in a year wanapata rain and they have got two seasons of of rain miti imeja gold imeja dhahabu imeja mawe ya dhamani imefanya nini imeja alafu nawaambia tu abrahamu aende kule kwa jangwa mahali ataanza kuchimba mawe kuchimba mashimo ya ku wells visima vinachimbwa alafu naambia hapo ndio umembariki <laughs> when i look at the bible i say hallelujah thank you jesus kumbe Mungu ategemei miti na maji kukubariki. Wewe unapoenda can you imagine sisi kama wa Kenya katika nchi hii ambayo iko na maji bado tuna import chakula kutoka nje. Do you know Israel does not import anything? Yaani instead wana export katika hiyo nchi ambayo ni jangwa wako na pesa, wako na mali, wako na chakula and they are food sufficient in themselves ndani ya jangwa kumbe Mungu ategemei mazingira kukubariki. Siyo kama unanipata. Mungu ategemei mazingira kukubariki. He depends on himself. Akisema nitakubariki, hata kama utotoka hapo ile lodwa, atakubariki. Bwana asifiwe. Yaani his ways are not our ways. Hallelujah. His thoughts are not our thoughts. Wakati ambapo jamaa anaita Lutu. Unajua huyo jamaa anaita Lutu? aliambatana na Abrahamu kwa sababu ya kuambatana na mtu ambaye amebarikiwa yeye pia akafanya nini akabarikiwa yani ukitaka baraka kuna vile ambapo unasongelea mtu ambaye amebarikiwa 
na baraka pia ambazo ziko juu yake zitakuja juu yake. Bwana asifiwe. Ufafanye kazi wake wakaanza kuwa na shida, wakaanza kusema, "Eh, hey, mambo wakaanza kuwa na shida katikati yao." Abraham akakuja kwa Lutu akamwambia, "Eh, hey, Lutu ndugu yangu, hakuna haja tupigana sisi ni mandugu. Ukisema utaenda pande hii, mimi ndaenda pande hii nyingine." The story is in Genesis 13. Bwana asifiwe. Biblia inasema kwamba Lot lifted up his eyes and looked at the valley of Sodom. The Bible says it was well watered like the garden of the Lord. Yaani aliangalia kaona huko ndio kuzuri. Hapo ndio kuna mazuri. Akasema hapo mahali ni kama garden ya Mungu. Akasema Abrahamu, "Eh, hey, mimi naenda kule kuzuri. Naenda kule kuna maji. Naenda mahali pale ambapo panakaa pazuri." Bwana asifiwe. Baada ya Lutu kwenda, what happened? The Bible says Mungu akaambia Abraham, "Inyoa macho yako, uangalie kusini, uangalie kaskasini, uangalie magharibi na mashariki." Akasema mahali popote ambapo macho yako inaona, nimekupatia. Including mahali ambapo Lutu alikuwa ameenda. How do they end up? Huyu amechagua mahali ambapo anaona hapa patakuwa pazuri. Bwana asifiwe. How do they end up? Lutu alimaisha alimaliza maisha yake aje. Hakuwa na chochote. Alikuwa kwa cave. Hana bibi akalala na watoto wake ndio kazao uzazi kizao chake cha kuendelea. The man was too ashamed even to go back to Abraham. Kuna mtu leo anaweza fanikiwa au kuwa na madharau na wewe unaendelea tu na Yesu, unaendelea tu kubarikiwa, unaendelea kupanuka. Bwana asifiwe. Inafika mahali kwa sababu alikuwa na madharau, hata wakati anahitaji msaada wako, anashindwa atakuja design gani. Asa naona badala ya kurudi kwa kwa Abraham rafiki yake, na naamini kwamba Abraham angemsaidia. Lakini kwa sababu ya aibu ambayo alikuwa nayo hangerudi. The man was too ashamed. Bwana asifiwe. The Bible says Lot he went toward Sodom alikuwa amekaribia wapi Sodom and he pitched his tent toward Sodom lakini wakati malaika alimwendea alikuwa wapi alikuwa ndani ukikaribia dhambi ndugu yangu dhambi itakuvuta Bwana asifiwe yani aliweka karibu na Sodom lakini pole 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 akaingia ndani The Bible says that righteous man and the Bible calls him a righteous man The Bible says he vexed his soul day and night by seeing and hearing the things which were done in Sodom May God help us in the name of Jesus Hallelujah The blessing of Abraham He is healthy, he is wealthy and he has a relationship with God. Bwana asifiwe. Naomba Mungu kuwa na watu katika kanisa hili. Baada ya baraka za Mungu kushuka na kumiminika juu ya maisha yako. Usiwahi fika mahali pesa ingie kwa kichwa. Ufikirie kwamba watu wengine nitakataka. Bwana asifiwe. Yaani unajua mimi naambianga watu hivi ukitaka mtu mnyenyekevu ukitaka kujua mtu mnyenyekevu umpatie pesa yani unapata tu kavits ama pikipiki sasa haukuziki unatembea mguu haiguzi haiguzi udongo because the way you walk now hey, nani kama wewe because you got some small money yet god wants to bless you with so much more may god help us bwana asifiwe So I want to touch on this be in the next 10 minutes and we we'll see how far we can go. He says, I will bless you. I will make you a blessing. He says, I will curse him that curses thee. <laughs> When you are blessed, you don't have to pray about your enemies. Nilisema nini? Kama umebarikiwa, hakuna haja uombe kwa ajili ya maadui wako. God himself says when I have blessed you he says I will curse those who curse you 
it is not your business to pray for your enemies. Hello. It is not your business to pray for your enemies. Wanaanza kuomba wakianza kuambia Mungu sasa acha tuanze kuingia kwa uwepo wa Mungu. I told you yesterday. Unaingia kutoka wapi? Bwana asifiwe. Let us now sing and enter the God's presence. Hiyo usiku kilala ulikuwa wapi? Bwana asifiwe sana. You want to enter the presence of God from where? You are outside the presence of God. Yet Mungu amesema kwamba tunaishi ndani yake na yeye anaishi ndani yetu. Biblia inasema kwamba wewe ni hekalu ya roho mtakatifu. Mungu anakaa ndani yako. Unaingia kutoka wapi? Ulikuwa umetoka saa ngapi? Bwana asifiwe. So I sympathize with people when they talk like that. Because kuna kitu naitonga Christ consciousness. Yaani unajua kwamba uko na Mungu. I know I am with him. Hakuna kitu ambayo kinanipatia confidence kama kujua kwamba God is in me. I am in him. I live in him. Paulo anasema in him we live and have our being. I'm the walking embassy of God here on earth. Bwana asifiwe. I'm a walking temple of God. Yaani ukiniona mimi niko na Mungu. Bwana asifiwe. So unaweza kuuliza swali Mbona wakati tunaanza kuumba saa zingine unaona Mungu ameanza kama Mungu ameshuka Bwana asifiwe Hajatoka mbinguni akakuja hapa yani mbinguni unaona ni kama uko outside space No Ah uh ah -uh. he is here with you Bwana asifiwe Wakati sister Karo anaanza kuimba utukufu wa Mungu unaanza kujaa haijatoka ukule it is coming from inside her The Bible says on the last day, Bwana asifiwe sana. That great day of the feast, the Bible says Jesus cried and said, "He who thirsts, let him come to me and drink, and out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water." Bwana asifiwe. Unaanza kusema kwamba let your living waters flow over my soul. Let your Holy Spirit come and take control. Hey God have mercy. Where are the living water is coming from? When the Bible says out of your belly shall what? Shall flow rivers. I need to know how to activate those rivers inside of me. <laughs> hey, hallelujah. <laughs> those rivers are not outside me, they are inside me. So as Abile anaanza kuimba, anaanza kuabudu, hizo chemi chemi ambazo ziko ndani yake zinalipuka. And then out of that earthen vessel, Bwana asifiwe. The Bible says there is this treasure in earthen vessels. Bwana asifiwe. Wewe we ni kama alabaster box. Usipovunjika manukata yaweze kutoka ndani yako. That is why the more you worship God, the more manukato ya Holy Ghost yanatoka ndani yako. Bwana asifiwe. As you break before God, the glory hidden inside you starts coming out. Bwana asifiwe. Kama mko hapa nyinyi watu wa present worship. Hebu niona watu wa present worship. Nataka mfanye kuna vitu tunataka tunaitaka spiritual experiment. Nani mwe kufanya spiritual experiment? Bwana asifiwe sana. Amuka saa tisa usiku. Usi, usifanye kitu yote speak in tongues for three hours. How many hours? Alafu kuja uongeze worship. Usikie usikie hiyo siku inakaa namna gani? Hello. Utasikia kumbe kuna hiyo kitu inafanya kazi. Au kuomba kwa Kiingereza, au kuomba kwa Kisukukusu, au kuomba kwa kuomba kwa Kiswahili, ulikuwa tu rakaba, shantuka, basi liba. Saa zingine zinaindanga mpaka zinaanza kuchange, zinaanza kucheza. Saa zingine unasikia kama kulia, saa zingine kucheka, ijalishi. Wewe piga 3 hours spiritual experiment. Bwana asifiwe. Kuja kanisani usikie vile kutakai hiyo siku. You will start worshiping God. Bwana asifiwe. Na utaanza kusikia tu kuna kuna watu manduru zinakuja kule kanisani kumbe kuna watu wanatembelea na Mungu. Unakuwa kuna viti zimepata shida. Bwana asifiwe sana. What happened? The experiment 
worked. Now, after the experiment, you continue now. Mwana siwe sana. Unajua kumbe, this thing works. So don't tell me you don't know how you did it. There is a formula. Mwana siwe. Kuna nini? Kuna formula. Naambia nga watu siwe tu kwamba people know that when I lay hands on them, they'll get healed. But if you come to me and tell me how do you do it, I will tell you the formula. It is there. If I can do it, you can do it. Wana sifu. Yani mungu hana watu special ambao amewachus kufanya sijui nini na nini. Bibia sabo kwa our God is a God of no partiality. Hana kitu neto mapendeleo. I want to read a verse and then I know we shall be closing in the name of Jesus. I'll just suggest around three minutes. So I know the Lord will bless us in those three minutes. Amen. The blessing of Abraham. This blessing of Abraham imetoka kwa Abraham, imekuja kwa Isaka, imekia mbaka kwa Yakobo. Alafu hii baraka ni yetu. You need to study this Bible. Wana sifuwe. Yani Biblia ni tam. Angalia baraka bila nafanya kazi ndani ya Isaka 26 or 26 of of Genesis. The Bible says there was a famine in the land beside the first famine that was in the days of Abraham and Isaac went unto Abimelech the king of the Philistines unto Gerar. And the Lord appeared unto him and said go not down to Egypt dwell in the land which I shall tell thee of. So join in this land and I will be with you and I will bless you for unto thee and to thy seed I will give all these countries. I will perform the oath which I swore to Abraham thy father and I will make thee thy seed to multiply as the stars of heaven. So God is repeating the same things. And I'm going to send to Egypt. Dio kuna chakula huko, lakini usiende huko. Kaa hapa na nitakubariki. Bwana asifiwe. It is so powerful. The Bible says in verse 12 The Bible says, then Isaac sold in that land. The land that was what? Dry. He sold seed in that land. And the Bible says, and received in the same year a hundredfold. And the Lord blessed him. And the Bible says, and the man waxed great. And went forward. And grew until he became very great. The new King James says, and the man began prospering and continued prospering until he became very prosperous. Yani mutu tumaza kushoot tu, wana kuona tu vile unaenda, vile unaendelea kubarikiwa. Wana kuona leo likuwa na piki piki, oh, umekuwa na kagari, umekuwa na mbili, umekuwa na ploti, because of something called a blessing the blessing of Abraham the blessing of Abraham will take you out of poverty to a place of glory but God can take you out of the aship out of a dunghill and make you great. That is the blessing of Abraham. What about Jacob? The father-in-law. stripes. Sitakuwa zangu. Hafu jamaa sujui ni imani gani likuwa na ayo. Wakati ngombe zenda kukunyo maji. And they are meeting. 
anatafuta miti ambayo ana zi strips na kuwa sikiona macho hivi zinaona hii ni stripes zinazaa stripes <laughs> kuna vitu kwa biblia ambazo na impressa <laughs> wala sifiwe anatafuta zile nonono zile ziko na afya anasema hizi kwa kati they are mating na ndio anaziwekea hizo vitu yani anatafuta miti ambayo akipule ni hizi zinakuwa na stripes ngombe kianga hiyo ni imani gani hiyo angalia biblia upate imani ndugu yangu <laughs> wala sifiwe zina check hivi as they are doing that business they give birth to the stripes only this is god bwana sifiwe unaweza sema mimi ni mwana wa ufalme na kwa mimi ni mwana wa ufalme sitaishi nikiwa maskini mungu atatafuta njia ya kunibariki na acha upuzi ambayo unaona kwa tv unaenda mahali wanasema receive unasema i receive acha upumbavu bwana sifiwe sana ambia oh god blesses you with what is in your hand the gift the bible say the gift of a man what does what makes room for him and makes him to appear before princes bwana sifiwe that is what god is doing to us today he wants you to be so blessed but it is your gift it is your gift that will make room for you yani mungu anataka afanye kazi ndani yetu na vile niliwaambia jana it is illegal for god to do anything on earth without you hakuna kitu dunia hii ambaye mungu atakifanya pasipo kuhusisha binadamu kwa sababu biblia inasema kwamba the heavens even the heavens belong to the lord our god but the earth he has given to the sons of men that's why in the bible hakuna wakati mungu ameindafia katika afya ya binadamu bila kutafuta mtu and yesterday i asked you who divided the red sea bwana asifiwe wakati ambapo kuna madui nyuma yake kuna the red sea behind before them and the bible says moses cried mungu akamuuliza go back there and, and read it in the book of exodus he says god asked moses why do you cry to me na leo ninakuuliza why are you crying to god wana <laughs> si god asked moses why do you cry to me say stretch your your fourth your road and divide the sea yani moses hakuwa ameingia katika technology ya ku divide sea mungu anamwambia usinililie stretch your road and do what divide the sea which means god could not do it without moses and as he stretched his rod god divided the sea bwana asifiwe kama kanisa la leo hatutaanza kukubaliana neno la mungu tuanze kutenda vile mungu anataka tutende we shall not see miracles kama tutakuwa tunatarajia pastor isa katoka nairobi siku gani aniwekele mkono ni pone hiv mtangoja mpaka lini pastor isaac is not omnipresent he is not everywhere hello bwana asifiwe sana that is why you need to agree with the word of god and say because the word of god says i'm going to do it start laying hands on people start doing spiritual experiments enda tafuta anti ambaye ni mgonjwa amelala mwambie leo nimekuja na unakuja unapona saa hii kwa jina la yesu wekelee mkono useme in the name of jesus bwana asifiwe sume sikia neno la mungu natoka kwa kila mkono upako mungu atakuja juu yako bwana asifiwe sana unatoka pale unawekelea watoto mikono unawekelea babako mkono unawekelea watu mikono one of the things that happened in my life ambayo ilikuwa tamu sana because you see nilipitia rejection mbaya sana from my parents especially one day nimeenda matanga kulikuwa mahali ndio kolongolo huko mimi nakuta mamangu mzazi she is a uh, kwa kitambo mamangu mzazi nimeona ako haja yani wamevaa tu smart lakini amevaa slippers ambi mama what's the problem akatoa slippers ni vidonda huko chini miguu vidonda yani hawezi anatembea terrible she is in pain hey kambi mama that day there was a lot of was grace na yuko ombea mzazi anakuanga kazi nyingine ngumu kidogo nani anajua hiyo bwana asiwe sana 
Zeno nataka utafute mtu mwingine akuja afanye hiyo kazi. Bwana asiwe sana. Akaniambia nikamuuliza ni wapi tunaezana ni kuombe. Matanga unajua sio ya waluya ni mbaya sana. Yaani ukiwa na, na matanga kwenu hakuna kwenu anza kwenu si kwenu tena ni kwa, kwa, kwa watu wote. So there was no room with any space. Akaaniambia kijana tu yeye chichuma la busasi papa unataka kumona. Yaani when people are are in pain they don't care. Akasema tu escort hapo chini wekele mkono it is okay. And I prayed for her in the name of Jesus. That was on the eve of the burial. And I prayed for her. Bwana sio sana. The following day alikuwa amevaa viatu. Akasema nikamuuliza what happened? Akasema nimepona. Yaani akasema you know she's old. Akasema she's kicho chote. And from that day my mother never gets sick. If she feels anything she says anajua mtoto wake akimwombea kwa sawa. Bwana asifiwe. Half mimi naonaanga mama naona huyu mama ni kama Syrophoenician woman. Bwana asifiwe sana. Anasema to daddy wewe omba tu mimi niko tu sawa. Bwana asifiwe sana. Her faith is so ni kama ya mtoto mdogo. Any problem she says just pray and I'll be okay. You need to start exercising your faith. Bwana asifiwe. Ndio tumekuja kupona na kuna watu watapona hapa wengi. Bwana asifiwe. And I believe before the end of today or maybe tomorrow healings will start happening even before he lay hands on people in the name of Jesus. Na tunaomba mpaka waanze kuita wale watu ambao wako kwa hizi villages around here to come and receive the healing in Jesus name. But more than that tukitoka hapa utuwe na watu ambao kuwa na jeshi ya watu vile toto wa mama wazee ambao wamejawa na Mungu wanasema ah these things must change in the name of Jesus bwana asifiwe just one last thing that i would want to mention baraka za Mungu ni zetu i told you blessing is an empowerment to do what to prosper baraka ni an endowment ya Mungu ambaye inakuja na kusaidia ku prosper. Sio kama mama yeso madithi ya Ruth. Bwana asifiwe. Alipotoka kule amekuja ameingia katika nyumba kat, katika nyumba ya Moabu amekuja sasa nyumba nini kwa katika ako na Naomi. Naomi amemwambia sasa enda kwa nyumba kwa nini kwa shamba ya Boaz. Unafanya kitu nitoka gleaning. Bwana asifiwe. Katika ile shamba ya Boaz Mungu akampatia favor. You know what how favor works? Favor is powerful. So wakati ameenda pale kwa Boaz, Boaz ana check huyo msichana anasema, "Mm, huyo msichana unajua sasa ni ni mjane. Hana anything. Amekuja gleaning. Gleaning inamaanisha kwa mfano katika nchi ya Israeli kama mnafanya harvesting ya mahindi, kuna ile mahindi mbaya mbaya mnaachia watu ambao ni maskini. Sawa sawa. Bwana asifiwe sana. Yaani umeenda tu kurokota rokota hizo vitu kwa kwa barabara ni kwa 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 mashamba yaani wamemaliza harvesting, si ndio? Hasa wewe unaenda kuokota rokota ile ambayo imeanguka anguka na ile mbaya mbaya ilikuwa imeachwa. Hiyo ndio kazi Ruth alikuwa ameenda kufanya. Ili at least wa survive. Lakini fever ya Mungu ilikuwa juu yake. Bwana asifiwe sana. This is how fever works. Yaani you do the same effort. The same strength. Boaz akaambia wanafunzi wafanye kazi nini? Akawaambia huyo msichana sasa anza kuacha usiache tu ile mbaya mbaya sasa anza kuacha pile kubwa kubwa kidogo. So inafika mahali ambapo Ruth ameenda kufanya gleaning lakini anabeba gunia mzima. Yaani umebarikiwa yeye anafikiria kwamba an, 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 amefikiria ameenda kufanya kazi kawaida. Kumbe Boaz ameinstruct wenzake ameinstruct wafanye kazi mfanye nini? Acha zaidi. Bwana asifiwe. The same effort more results. Praise the Lord. The same effort but you are achieving more. Bwana asifiwe. That's why mimi sio sasa darau mtu. Haijalishi wewe ni watchman. Wewe ni maid. 
wewe sijui unafanya kazi ambayo watu wengine wamechukia kuna style Mungu anaweza kukubariki kupitia kwa hiyo kitu utashangaa mimi niko na maids kanisani wamenunua shamba huko maids na si mmoja si wawili si watatu niko na 36 maids na church they are blessed wana sifa wewe maid akikuja katika mchango atoe 1000 kumi unafikiri maid ana kasta gani wewe maid acha mchezo wewe kuna watu wamebarikiwa and we teach them how to be blessed bwana asifiwe haleluya it was the other day nani bramulo in our church there was a lady who was uh, alikuwa in our church she was working very funny jobs on sunday mtotole alikuwa alifu kumla sita huyo msichana mahali alitoka na angalia sema acha mungu aitwe mungu acha mungu aitwe mungu wana sifiwe I cannot underestimate what God can do through you. No. Praise the Lord. You have got such potential if you only knew what the blessing of God can do. Huyu msichana akuja kichacha alikuwa amegonjeka. Yaani hata video zake hizi hazikuwa zinaweza kuku yaani kukunjua hivi kuwa flat. It was impossible. And we prayed for her for healing she was healed. Alikuwa na shida ya kazi, shida ya kila kitu, rejection kwa familia, yani alikuwa anakaa reject. But God. <laughs> Huyu Mungu na yako hapa sahi. He will change your story this week in Jesus name. Bwana asifiwe. The only thing you need is to be consistent with him. Tafuta ili neno, kaa zama ndani ya ili neno. Tamani kujazwa na Holy Ghost. And you're going to be filled with the Holy Ghost this week in the name of Jesus. Na mambo lazima yabadilike. Bwana asifiwe sana. Kuna kijana chacha ambaye amekuja juzi and he bought a for us 20 seats. Kwao nyumbani, kwao. Hata baiskela haikuwahi kuwa kwa boma yao. Sasa hii Mungu amemsaidia. He now owns two vehicles. Zinafanya kazi ya Uber. He has built himself a house. Amejinunulia shamba kwa sababu kile ni baraka ya Mungu. The Bible says the blessing of the Lord maketh rich and addeth no sorrow. Bwana asifiwe. I don't believe in poverty. Na Mungu anatubariki na tuendelee tukao wanyenyekevu. Haruna kuwa na maringo. The Bible says what he let him who boast do what? Boast in the Lord. Mtasherekea kwa sababu ya mkazi ambaye Mungu anaitenda. The blessing of Abraham. Your health, your wealth and your relationship with God. Yaani nitabarikiwa lakini bado nitamrukia Mungu kama yani sitaanza ku kuna watu wakibarikiwa tu hata hata maombi hawakuji tena. Na ni bibi tu ulipata na mabwana. Hauji ni stress umepata unahitaji Yesu akusaidie katika hiyo stress ya marriage. Hello. Ndani ya ndoa kuna kuna stress ama kuna na hiyo stress bado inahitaji huyu Yesu. Bwana asifiwe sana. Amen. Yaani umeoa tu. Yaani nimekufanyia tu harusi juzi umeacha kuja maombi. He, ndugu yangu, shida yako ni nini? Tunahitaji Yesu every step of the way in the name of Jesus. Bwana asifiwe. Sijakwambia niko na stress kwa marriage. Mimi I'm a very happy man. Happily married man. Amen. Lakini ni Yesu ananisaidia katika hizo mambo yote. Yes, we need the wisdom that we need in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Ni yani umebarikana kagari kidogo kama hata uko na fungu ya pikipiki. Sasa ukikuja sasa unazungusha kwa kidole unaona waone kwamba uko na Mungu amekubariki na gari. Sasa acha hiyo pusi. Yaani ukibarikiwa na gari kifungue na kataa kutoshea kwa mfuko. Na hizo siku zote ilikuanga ndani ya mfuko. <laughs> Wala sifiwe. We are going to be blessed and still remain humble before God. Our relationship with God will be more strong as we get blessed in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah.
Nataka tumalike tu mchungaji tumalizie in Jesus mighty name. May God bless you and do you good in Jesus name.